How do you treat your tapolid with your <laughs> Hello and welcome to Let Us Farm. My name is Emily Fonwell Ogu of Let Us Farm. So today we shall be discussing about how do you treat your tapolid pond before stocking? So, so many people are always worried about the treatment of these ponds before stocking because the truth is that the treatment of the pond can actually go a long way to determine the success of whatever you do with the pond. So today, we shall be discussing in full how do we treat our tapolim pond before stocking. So if this is the first time of you seeing me, this is Let Us Farm page, and all we do here is we try to prepare practical solutions to solving all our agri problems. So if you're having any issues in your farm, all you need to do is simply do a two to three minutes video and send to me. <clears throat> when I look at this problem, I'll provide a solution to you. But please, if you are doing this video, try and do it as you are feeding your fishes. So this gives me an overall view of how your fishes respond and I will be able to know what and what exactly to do for these fishes. Having said that, let me use this opportunity to remind you that we are not forming any WhatsApp group. We don't have any WhatsApp group. We don't have any Telegram group. So should anyone contact you for that, please kindly discard that. I don't know what those guys are talking about. So just take a look at this and I'll be right back. Welcome back. So... You know, uh, like um, the previous videos I did on pond treatment, I tried to explain some of the misconceptions that some of us actually have about treating ponds. The fact is this. Some of these things I say is left for you to either you accept or you don't. But I always tell people something. If you've been doing something and you've not seen exactly the benefit of what you're doing, and someone else brings a new idea that is not going to compare you to spend anything and it's not going to risk what you are doing. Why not try it and see which is the best? So be a judge of that. Now, tapolim pond and concrete pond are similar things because both are surface ponds. What I mean by surface ponds are ponds that are on, on above the ground. While the etting pond is not a surface pond because it is dug on the ground. So now, tapolim pond, similarly to the concrete ponds, many people have this misconception of saying that they want to treat the tapolim. Now, the funny idea is that some people want to say they want to kill the odor of the tapolim. While this may sound good and fine, the issue is what do you want to use and kill this odor? This is where the story starts to change. Now, some people have been advised that the best thing, way to kill this odor is for you to cut plantain stems or banana stems and soak it in the tapolim. But the question is, how does the plantain stem kill an odor? It is a question that, no matter how you twist it, it becomes more difficult and more complicated to answer. Now, some people also say that the reason for doing it is that they want to fertilize the tapolim. It also sounds very good, you know, to fertilize something so that the thing will now do more than what it's supposed to do. Just like boosting the energy of that thing, it sounds very good. But the issue is that a plantain stem is not a fertilizer. So how does it fertilize this? That's another story. Then some people will also add poultry waste inside this tapolim, while some people will go as far as adding uh, 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 rabbit urine inside the tapolim, all in the bid to fertilize the tapolim. This also sounds very, very interesting. But then again, how does this work? Now, what is a tapolim? It's, if you look at the tapolim, you see that it's a thick rubber-like rubber-like body that is used to fabricate tapolim. So the tapolim itself, it's like a fiber. It's thick. Now, the issue is that it has nothing, nothing can penetrate it. Water cannot penetrate it. 
if you want to penetrate it, you have to use fire to destroy it. So you see that the, the water cannot penetrate the tapolin itself because of the component used in the formulation. So now look at it logically. Since water cannot penetrate inside and you soak something in water to, to make the thing to absorb. Because if you want to fertilize something, you want that thing to absorb the fertilizing ingredient and then give it out to something. That's how it works on, on plants. When you plant, you put fertilizer on the soil. The soil absorbs it and then the crop now takes it up from the soil. That is the way it works. Now, since the tapolin is, it, is, is a thick fiber, something that cannot absorb, then how will the fish take it from there? It doesn't make any sense. So when you look at this critically, you see that it's not sense. It's not workable. Now, the, the bad thing about this situation is that because this doesn't work, there may be another problem. For instance, now when you soak that stem, there are co chemical components in the stem, but when you press the stem, it brings out watery components. We don't know what must have infected what you are, what you are cutting, and you now soak it. Now, inside the tapolin, you have other places there where there are some uh, plastic components. That is where they put the fittings for you. What if there were some bacteria infection on this thing, and they go to sleep under those plastic? So when you release the water, all did not go out. They are under this plastic. You now add another water. They float again. And then you now pour your fishes inside. Your fishes takes this bacteria. And then you now see them dying. And then you now buy treatment. You add. The water goes out. It doesn't go out completely again. You put another water. The fishes keep dying. Keep dying. And you are now confused. You now lose so much money. I'm just painting a scenario of what actually happens. The reason why I say this is that most times I always say, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Not really that I have anything to gain from it, but I'm only trying to precaution so that you don't end up falling victim of losing money for what you don't even understand. So why am I saying this? There is absolutely no need for you to cut those things and put inside. It doesn't work. Now, some will still argue that, okay, the poultry waste, the, God, the urine waste, is the same protocol. There could be infections in it. After all, we know that the waste contains bacteria inside. So there must be infection in it. And if it doesn't go out well, it is the life that you introduce after this that goes to waste. Now, the question is, if all this is wrong, how do we treat it? Fine. Once you get your tapolin, after mounting your tapolin, setting your tapolin, simple you get a detergent. You can buy either hypo or chick anything, add it to the detergent, shake very well, climb inside your tapolin and scrub. Wash thoroughly. After washing that thoroughly, use water. Rinse very well. Allow to dry. After drying, you put water, fresh water, and then you stock your fish. It's that easy. So if you have problem of that the tapolin is smelling, if you wash it with good detergent and one of these washing chemicals like a hypo, jig, or anything like that, wash, mix the two together and wash it very well. Allow it to dry. It smell we go. Even if you still perceive one or two small odor, after you have finished washing it like this and you allow to dry, you put water, you are still perceiving it, don't worry. When the fish come there, the odor will go. Because already you have killed, with the wash you did, you have killed anything that is infectious that the fish can pick up. So whatever is remaining is just air. It's simple. No need to complicate issues. This, is, this, this, this happens not because somebody wants it to happen, but because, though know, ignorance is not an excuse, but it's because many of us, we are ignorant of what we do. But it's never an excuse. So instead of you to have issues and you are losing and losing and losing, try it. When you want to stop with your tapolin, just get your tapolin. After setting the tapolin, adjusted everything in the tapolin, you go inside the tapolin, take your time to scrub it, wash it thoroughly. After washing it, get clean water, not mud water, or clean water, and rinse from the top down everywhere. Allow the water to go. After that, allow the tapolin to dry. After the tapolin have finished drying, then you put fresh water. 
when you now put fresh water, then you can be able to introduce your fishes. And then you now start the fish management and feeding. And you will see how your results will blossom. Have I said anything that is more confusing or something that you don't really understand or you want me to explain more or there's a topic you want me to discuss further? Kindly drop that in the comment section and I will get back to you. Until I come your way next time, my name is Emele Fonwell Oge of Leros Farm. Keep farming. It's a way of life. Hey, y'all, come look at this.